Hi. Are you here again? I think it's a thing. I'm out of breath holding up all these books. They're so heavy. Brady, say hello to everybody. Wish them Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. What's your favorite Christmas book? Do you have one? Okay, all right, I think I think I know. I think I know it's in the stack and we will make sure to point, oh, do you wanna put your, Mabel's here too? You wanna to come say hello? Come on, say hello. <laughs> I think her favorite is probably the same as Brady's. I will let you guys know which one is their favorite when we get to it, but hello! My name is Kendra and welcome back to this cozy space. Are you gonna stay here? Oh, the sweetest puppies in the world. Um, today we're talking about Christmas books. Books are near and dear to my heart. I felt like we should do this in the library today. Uh, I have a pretty big stack and I tried to grab for ones that are not super popular or often talked about. That way maybe you'll get some new ideas. Some of these, I don't know if they're still in print. I get a lot of my books off of eBay or um, Better World Books, sites like that, thrift books. So some of them you might have to do a little bit of a digging to find. Um, but that means you can probably get them for a really good price. But a lot of them are still in production. So we got to get started. Can you let me talk? Okay. Thank you so much. All right. I have a big old stack of books over here next to me. Before we dive in, I did want to share, for those of you who don't know, I was previously a teacher. And a big part of my passion with teaching was sparking that love of reading in my students. I worked books in any way that I could and the holidays were just very near and dear to my heart. So many of the books that I'm sharing today are not only love by myself and my own children, but many, many previous students that I've read these books to. I think that's a pretty big deal whenever you have a whole bunch of sweet souls in a classroom to test books out on and when it's a book that gets requested over and over and over again and in some cases children will even remember the book a year later which is a really big deal for a little child to be able to remember something like that for a whole full year so I will let you know when we get to those books in particular but as a whole just know these all have mine my sons and my previous students stamp of approval okay let's go ahead and dive in now we're getting ready to gush over an author, and this particular author is one of my favorites for the holiday season. She can write a holiday book like nobody else, in my opinion. Every time she comes out with a new book, it makes its way to my cart, and it always makes it onto my favorite children's book list of the year. So, without further ado, let me introduce you to, if you don't already know her, Tracy Corduroy. Oh man, she can write a heart hugging holiday book like nobody's business. I know all holiday books for the most part are heart hugging, but something about the way Tracy writes. <gasps> oh, she's the queen in my opinion. I hope she keeps writing holiday books for a very long time. So this one is Mouse's Night Before Christmas, and this is a story of the night before Christmas, but told from the mouse's perspective. The illustrations are fabulous, and this book will make you smile and and it will make you hug it at the very end. I promise you're gonna do this. Ooh, because this is what we call a heart hugging book. We have another one of Tracy's books to gush over. This is the story of Shifty McGrifty and Slippery Sam. This is the story of two characters who we see back here who are recovering robbers turned bakers. I wanted to read this first page to you because I just thought it was precious and it kind of is it sums up the story. Okay. <laughs> a long time ago in a town far away, there once lived two robbers, I'm sorry to say, but Shifty and Sam learned that stealing was bad. So now they are bakers and everyone's glad. Do you see? Do you see what I mean? So you get to follow Shifty McGrifty and Slippery Sam as they go and test out their baking skills on the big guy and trouble ensues. Are they still robbers or are they fully recovered? Is somebody else a robber and they're going to get their justice? I don't know. You'll have to read it to find out, but it's so cute and really great. And it's another heart hugging book, just like Tracy's other book. Okay. We have another Tracy book to share, another Tracy Corduroy, sorry, her and I are like BFFs, so I just call her Tracy. Uh, this is the Christmas Extravaganza Hotel. 
This is the story of Frog who has been dreaming of going to this Christmas extravaganza hotel and he finally sets forth to do so. The only thing is he reads the map upside down and he ends up at Bear's house and Bear sees this funny little frog at his door that's full of Christmas cheer and excitement to be at this hotel and he just doesn't know how to break the news to him that he's at the wrong place. He eventually does, but he wants to make sure that Frog's Christmas is just as wonderful and extravagant as he hoped it would be. It's a great story of friendship. Again, the illustrations knock it out of the park. You will laugh and smile and you will want to hug the book when you're done. Tracy, you are the Christmas queen. My next book is maybe, it's so hard to say because I love all of her books so much, um, but I think it's at the top of the list for Tracy Cordery books. I actually cannot find my copy of it, and that's because I gave one away. I had two. I gave one away. The other one I read over and over and over again to my class last year, and my teacher books that I read during Christmas, I can't find them. They're lost in boxes in the garage. For those of you who don't know, we moved to Utah six months ago and we are still very much packed and, and settling into our new home. So I hope I find it in the future because I love that book. If not, I'll be buying another copy. But I'm going to pop a picture of it up right here so that you can see the cover. Uh, it, just in Tracy fashion, it's another heart-hugging book. It's a story of a bear and a little girl who receive a gift. And it's not a gift for them, although they're very tempted to keep it. They decide to go out on a journey through a wintry wonderland and find out just who this gift belongs to and whenever they discover who it is beautiful things happen this book made me tear up at the end which is always a treat when you're reading book to students and you get teary-eyed and you have to be like oh my nose is itchy and blame it on something else oh i love this book it teaches a ton of great morals and lessons about friendship and doing for others and loving others it's just a great book tracy the best. Okay, I know that I just loved all over Tracy Corduroy and she deserves every second of that, but there is another author who is near and dear to my heart. I don't even think I need to say her name. You're going to see this book and you're going to know exactly who wrote it because her illustrations are so noticeable. Um, but when I saw that she had come out with her version of the Nutcracker, I was so excited. I actually pre-ordered this book. We read it the day it came in. It's been pulled out many times already this year, so I think it's safe to say that it's a new favorite for our family. Um, we're huge Nutcracker fans, and um, my boys really enjoyed reading the story with Jan's twist and, of course, her amazing illustrations. It's the same story that we know, but the thing that she does is a tiny a bit different is that instead of including illustrations of people doing all the different parts of the ballet she uses animals so we have bears and we have these beautiful foxes are they foxes yes elegant foxes wow I'm so glad that I said foxes they don't really because they're white they look more like a wolf but I said the right thing yay me um, gosh, her illustrations just bring the story to life. This is the kind of book that you read over and over and you just kind of stop and you look at the pictures and you just take time to just really suck in the story. I don't have this one with me and it's not Christmas related, but I just have to share this one as well. If you have littles who love the story of Cinderella, she did another version of Cinderella. I think it's called Cinders. I will link it below and if I can find I'll put a picture of it up here. That was another one that my students loved and it's very wintry so it's perfect to read right now or as we are heading into winter. Oh my gosh. Okay, let me just tell you really quick though. That book, she tells the whole story through chickens and not just like your everyday chickens. She included them all in her illustrations and they are stunning and the costumes are amazing. I need to go find that book. I need to read it right now. Anyways, it's worthy of a checkout or a purchase. Even though it's not Christmas related, I think it kind of ties in a little bit. All right, along the lines of Nutcracker, uh, we try to um, 
partake and enjoy the Nutcracker story in any way we can. Of course, the movies, of course, the ballet. My oldest is dying to go see the Nutcracker ballet. I'm hoping to take him at some point. Um, but until that happens, we have several books that tell the story in different ways. And this is another one that's a favorite in our house. Not only do my boys love this, but children who visit our home love this. I keep it on our coffee table because I want it to be touched. And um, you'll see why. And it's beautiful. The cover is stunning. So it makes a great decoration. But whenever kiddos come over, they love to... They love to press the buttons. So each page has a little place where you can press a button. It tells the story of the Nutcracker and it's a very condensed form. So I think it's good for younger children, probably like four and a half and five and above can handle this one. Um, and then it's interactive because they can press the button and then you can read the story with the music that goes along with that part of the story playing in the background. The cool thing about this is that not only do you get to be fam uh, familiarized with the music, which we all know, but in the very, very back of the book, it tells you the name of the different songs, which I did not know, but my son can now identify all of the songs. And when we play our vinyl copy of the Nutcracker Ballet and listen to the music, he can say, oh, that's the whatever, or that's the whatever. I have no idea. I've been a Nutcracker fan since I was a small child and I can't even name them. So that's pretty cool. So this is definitely a favorite that we look forward to enjoying every year. All right, so my last Nutcracker book to share is this version of the Nutcracker. It's a pop-up book. This one's a little bit wordier than the last one, so probably not for younger children. And it, also with it being a pop-up book, it probably gets shredded to bits and pieces if you'd let younger children touch it. So it might be one that you want to read to them or maybe just show the pictures to them. Um, but when they get older, they definitely would enjoy the story, but I'll kind of let you see the words at the bottom, how it's just a little bit wordier, but wow, the pop-ups in general are so fun. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I have to show you this progression of the Nutcracker. So he starts out this way and then boom, turns into the Nutcracker. And then we have, of course, the Mouse King and they're on their way to the enchanted land. <laughs> and then all of the awesome scenes all together on one page. This is another one that I pre-ordered previous years ago whenever I saw that they were coming out with this one. It's stunning. It's one I hope to have on my shelves for a very long time and enjoy for many years. Okay, up next, this is a newer book for us this year, but we have been enjoying it a ton. And while I say it's a newer book, I don't know if they're still publishing it. I purchased a used copy on Amazon, but they have them on eBay as well. It's the 12 Days of Christmas. I know you're like, um, hello. We all know this one. Yes, we all know this one. Not only is it stunning, look at this, this book. I keep it on my coffee table as well because it's beautiful. The illustrations are beautiful, but the thing that we really, really love about this book is that you read the 12 days of Christmas, the full song story, and after you finish that page, you flip to the back of the book, and in the back, it gives you history on those different items within the song. So if you've ever wondered why are there rings in the story, why the partridge in a pear tree, why the lords are leaping, why the geese, it gives you facts behind all of those and why a person who is smitten with someone may give those to a person that they have their eyes on. It is so interesting. It sparked a ton of conversation between myself and my boys and we've learned a lot. And I say we because I have learned a lot as well. So this is a great one to have on hand and I think this is one that can grow with my children. I see us revisiting this and maybe even doing future lessons just on this book because you really could take it so many different ways. All right. Now we are on to the one, the only, Fancy Nancy. This one's probably a little bit more mainstream, but I haven't, it's an older book and I haven't heard it talk about a ton, talked about a ton recently. It's called Splendiferous Christmas. If you know Fancy Nancy, this is true Fancy Nancy form, but it's so fun. It's fun to read. I have two boys, even they enjoy Fancy Nancy stories. And I think you can't go wrong. 
who doesn't want a little sparkle and a little extra fancy in their life during Christmas? This next book features a character that my boys and I love very much. We have his first story. It's one of our favorite books. It's called Meerkat Mail. So a couple years ago when I saw that they were releasing a Meerkat Mail Christmas edition, we of course had to have it. So I pre-ordered it and it showed up at our door and it's been a couple years and we're still excited to pull this friend out every Christmas. It's a story of Meerkat and in the first book he travels and travels and travels and sends correspondence back to his family during his travels of what's going on. The same formula applies here but it's got you know some Christmas flair and you get to experience Christmas in the desert as he is traveling. So he is a meerkat and he uh, has a meerkat family which includes many 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 brothers and sisters who he loves dearly but occasionally they get on his nerves just a touch and he feels the need to get out and take a breather. So he does this and sets forth to visit family and he corresponds back with his family to let him know how his adventures are going by sending cards throughout the story. You have to read the cards because they further the story and give you a glimpse into what he is facing. <laughs> They're just really fun. I think this one is definitely worthy of adding to your collection. For those of you who follow along on my Instagram channel, you know all about my infatuation with cardinals. They're even present in my library. At some point, I hope to give you guys a library tour while it's all decorated for Christmas, and you will see the cardinals. I've always loved cardinals, but that bond became even more special to me last year when I had a pair of cardinals that would visit me every day, several times a day. I named them Stanley and Francesca, and they kept a bit of my heart back in Texas when we had to move away from them. But I have realized that I have bits of cardinals all around me, and this book, is one of those bits. I purchased this before my love affair with Stanley and Francesca, and now that I know them and they have a place in my heart, this book is even more special to me. It's a story of Red and Lulu, two cardinals who get displaced during an event and how they come back together. This one also has amazing illustrations. It has a storyline that will tug at your heart and perhaps loving cardinals just as much as I do. Speaking of stories that tug at your heart, this next one does just that. This is one that's a bit of an older story, and you might have to do a bit of digging to find it, but you may not. I don't know. It's worthy of doing a Amazon search. If I can find it, I'll link it down below. So this is a story of an older gentleman who lives in a cabin tucked in the woods, and he's recently lost his wife, and he's feeling a little um, unsettled the holiday season that she's not around. He's cleaning dishes at the sink one night and he looks up and he looks at his window and he finds a horse has collapsed out in his pasture. It's snowing, the, the wind is strong and the horse doesn't look like she's in good shape. So he rushes out to get her, he takes care of her and nurtures her. He finds joy in his friendship with her. He puts her in his barn and he loves on her throughout the night making sure that she's doing okay. And when he wakes up the next day, there's a surprise there for him. I'm not gonna ruin the surprise for you. This book is a special book and it's one I hope to have forever and I enjoy reading it over and over again each year that we pull it out. It's beautiful, it has a great message and I hope that you're able to find this one and enjoy the story just as much as we do. This next book gets my stamp of approval as well as my boys, as well as my students and it is one we've had for a while and we read it over and over and over again. It's Nancy Rose, Merry Christmas Squirrels. She has several books about squirrels and we are so interested in how she captures these pictures of the squirrels. And, and I'm not sure if this one does, but in some of her books, she shares her camera setup and how she makes the little props for these squirrels. It's so fun to look at the details and she really goes above and beyond just to create the perfect props and every little tiny thing to kind of further the story along. And this one is just as fabulous as her others. My boys really love the story. You would think that they would get tired of it because we read them all the time, but they still find new things to talk about within the illustrations or I guess the photography that's nestled inside the book. Um, it's definitely worthy of a check and it might even inspire your children or loved ones in your life to attempt some nature photography. 
This next book is one that was loved by my students. They giggled and giggled when we read this and it kind of caught me by surprise. I wasn't expecting it to be uh, anything special, but I really enjoyed it myself. It's a story of a little girl, a unicorn, and a reindeer. Never let a unicorn meet a reindeer. This little girl really wants a reindeer to come visit her, so she writes a letter to Santa just hoping that maybe he would have a reindeer come visit her. But what happens if the reindeer does visit her, and would he like her unicorn? Would they be friends or foe? And what if they don't like each other? How, how would she sort all of that out? So, I will let you know that the reindeer does come to visit. And the reindeer and the unicorn, they're not BFFs. And some funny things happen between those two characters and her going along for the ride, trying to sort it all out with them. This one's a silly story. There's not a lot of morals behind it, but it's a fun one to read in the holidays and the kids really enjoy this one. This next book makes me smile. It's just silly. The illustrations are so fun and there are two furry friends in my life that I love so very much. They were here at the beginning of our video and I remember I asked them which was their favorite book. It's this one. I think because there's dogs all over it. Maybe that's why they like it. So there's no like groundbreaking morals happening here. This isn't here to teach you a lesson. It's just here to be fun and precious and cute. And that's exactly what it does. The 12 dogs of Christmas. Uh, we're big dog lovers in our family, obviously. And we love talking about the different dog breeds. And I love how they're depicted throughout the story. Look at the beagles with the carolers. Is that not perfect? And perhaps Brady's favorite page is the Border Collie page, of course. So we enjoy getting this book out every year. The illustrations are really engaging and fun. If you look, there's like little silly things hidden on each page and perhaps a little character that's important throughout the story is hiding in the pages as well. This one's definitely a fun one. That's it for our favorites, but let me tell you y'all, I am barely scratching the surface in regards to our favorite Christmas books. I could probably do a part three and a part four, but I think it's enough to get you started and maybe get you to the library to check some things out that might be new to you. So for this next part, I wanna share just a few books that we picked up. They're new to us this year, so I can't give it my stamp of approval just yet but I hope they're awesome and they become one of our favorites. So up first is this book called Santa's Book of Names. Um, this looks like an older book. I thrifted it, but I bet you could find it on eBay or thrift books or maybe a local thrift store to you and probably your library. It's a story of a little boy who's up in his bedroom and he hears a sound. He goes down to see what it is and lo and behold, there's presents all in his living room and a book by his fireplace. He picks the book up, it feels heavy in his hands, and it looks like it's an extra special book. And when he opens it up, he realizes that it's Santa's book with all of the names of the boys and girls who have been good and naughty this year. He has to figure out how to get this book back to Santa. That's where the journey picks up and you get to explore the rest of the ride with him. This is another new to us book. It's another old one. I got this at a thrift store. Again, you could probably search for it on eBay or find a used copy on Amazon or Better World Books, one of those. Um, this one I'm really excited about because I will have another video coming up soon talking about what I am reading for the month of December. And this is very similar to something that I'm reading myself for the month of December, but like a bigger, loftier adult version. And this one for my boys, I think is gonna be a really good like comp, like in between. I always share what I'm reading if it's appropriate or I can like make it appropriate for them. So they've heard about that book and I think they'll be excited to read this one because they're very similar. So it's filled with stories um, from children written to Santa and his responses back to the children. It's a little bit more wordy, which is kind of what I've been looking for. My children are getting a little older and we love to kind of curl in with the book and spend a little bit more time with it. So when I saw this at a thrift store, I thought perhaps that would be a great fit for us. So I hope I love it. I think I'm going to. The illustrations are definitely fun. Now this one, I know you can still get on Amazon. It was just released. It is called The Legend of the Christmas Witch. I'm so excited to get this one. I almost pre-ordered it, but I didn't. 
and I'm glad I didn't because I saw people talking about it on YouTube and I was able to get a better look in the story to see if it was something I wanted and then I was like yes I have to have it so we uh, do winter solstice in our home and I think this is gonna be a great companion for winter solstice because it's a lot look at the picture I mean does this not scream winter solstice it's a lot of natural elements within the story and again I am reading something very similar to this you'll hear more about it whenever I talk about books that I'm reading so I'm not gonna tell you too much but it really goes along with the story and my boys know about the other book that I'm reading I think they'll be excited to read this one as well because it's kind of like a companion read in a way um, but it's the story of Santa and his sister did you know Santa has a sister she does did you know she's a witch she is um, I've heard the ending is a little dark I don't know we'll see but wow the illustrations and the book itself beautiful the character of this next book I know is very near and dear to many of our hearts and let me tell you she is depicted with perfection in this story. I've peeked in this a little bit just to make sure that Anne was really in the pages and y'all oh it's her heart loving Christmas. How should I say that? Her heart but in the Christmas season, loving all the Christmas things. Right, that maybe that makes a little bit of sense. But imagine Anne walking through a winter wonderland during Christmas time. That's what she got in this book. It's so fun. I can't wait to read this with my boys. They actually don't know the story of Anne. Um, I feel like I should probably watch those Hallmark. Is it Hallmark? What are like the good ones, like the old versions? I do love Anne with an E. I'm not knocking on Anne with the E. I do love that. But you know, like the old movies that they made like back in the day. Was it Disney? I don't remember. I need to look it up. We have Disney Plus. So that would be awesome if it was Disney because I could watch it with my boys. But I would watch those over and over and over again when I was a kid. And I was so excited when they came out with Anne with an E. And I think that that movie is like special in its own way, but it's not Anne to me. But this is Anne right here. This is her. Oh, if you love Anne and you love Christmas time and you have littles that might need a little help with seeing all the joy that the season brings, this is definitely the book for you. All right, everybody, that's all I have for today. Thank you so much for hanging out with me where I uh, gushed a little, maybe just a little bit, um, all over these children's books. Can you tell I have a passion for children's literature? I do. It's kind of like a big passion, but like just literature in general, you know? Hey, hey, why I have you here, let me do a little shameless plug. Coming up soon, I'm going to move something from Instagram that my boys and I do on our book page over to YouTube. I call it Kids Lit Friday. So every Friday we kind of check in, we talk about books they're reading, books that we're excited to read, read alouds are reading together, some books that we're using in our homeschool. Um, I do this on Instagram most Fridays, but I think here it will just be like, an occasional kind of a thing so if you have enjoyed listening to me talk about books today hopefully you'll hang out and look for those uh, future videos coming up I'm thinking in January my boys love talking about books just as much as I do so I'm sure they'll pop in every now and then and give their opinion on stuff so that'll be coming up soon but anyways I'm excited to enjoy the rest of vlogmas with you thanks again for hanging out with me and I hope that you have a wonderful rest of your day goodbye everybody